Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. Welcome to our town. I'm here at the Garfield School in Abilene with a couple of experts on education. Dr. Denise Guy, Superintendent of Schools, USD 435, good morning. Thank you, Dennis, for and allowing us to come onto the program. Excuse me for over-talking you. And the real expert, I do suppose, <laughs> would be the current product of USD 435, Sage Tokach. Thank you. So we're going to talk about an issue that's in front of the city of Abilene and, and the surrounding USD 435 territory, and that's facilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have a bond issue that's going to vote on? April 1st. April 1st. Mm -hmm. And we're here to talk about the facts about USD 435 facilities and why this is important. And as I told you when we scheduled this interview, I want to talk a lot about this through the eyes of business. Mm -hmm. I want to look at the school as a business because we talk about economic development all the time. And, and frankly, I don't think people often think about schools as economic development or economic entity. They think it's educational. Well, of course it is, but it's also an economic endeavor that's very, very big in any small town, and it certainly is for us. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, first, I'd like to just start out just reviewing quickly the project and, and a little bit of history, if that's all right. <clears throat> we started out. Well, the board has, has discussed this now for probably three or four years, and in 2012, we had a, a, a hired a professor from K-State to come out and just study all of our facilities and, and whatnot, and um, he came up with the idea that we needed to pull together a citizens advisory group. We did, and they studied the facilities as well, took tours and so on and so forth, and um, they uh, came up with a plan to present to the board, and the plan is, is what's out there now for the community to let us know what they think. And they can let us know what they think by voting on it on April 1st. Um, and the plan revolves around several issues. The first one is this building. You know, this building was built in 1942. Uh, it's, it's a nice building, it's beautiful, but it really doesn't meet our needs in that the space is is, it's very crowded and, and I'm looking at the stage right now and we've had to wall off the stage so that we can have offices and storage in behind and you know that's just one of the examples of the space issues in this building we also have a couple of modulars out in the back so that was one of the issues that the the committee came up with another issue for the whole district revolved around safety and security you know we are post Columbine Sandy Hook era and you know, it, it's on the minds of every superintendent, I think probably in the nation. And many know, citizens. And many citizens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what are the best ways that we can assure safety for our students, our staff? Uh, I think we owe it to our students, our parents, and our staff to do whatever we can to provide a safe environment so that we can focus and the teachers can focus on teaching and learning. So that's the other issue that, and every school will be touched in one way with regards to safety. And then, um, and then another issue is just space. Um, in 1975, uh, the Individuals with Disability Education Act was enacted, and uh, that made a difference in our schools and the space. That's, you know, that means we teach every child, no matter what the disability is. And, and sometimes the disabilities are such that the child needs space. And um, so we've addressed that, or the board has addressed that at Kennedy by adding some rooms on, and they addressed it at McKinley by adding some rooms on. But Garfield, they didn't know what to do. So that's, that's kind of, you know, do we add, add rooms on to this building or do we look at something different? And that's what the Citizens Advisory Group, help, group helped with. So that's the other issue then at uh, the middle school is to add some space because we've got a population up there, we have a population here that just needs extra space. The, the last issue is our high school. We have, <clears throat> we have space issues there as well. In uh, 1955, when that building was built, there were no girls' athletics. And since that time, we've, been, we've added a lot of different girls' athletics. And um, so we've, met, we've been able to manage with the gym we have. And you know the, the visiting girls' locker room um, is really a room for the referees. There's, a, there's one um, bathroom that's usable for a, a team of 35 girls. And so there's some issues there that, that we've gotten by with, but um, I, you know, it's 
maybe time to see what the community wants to do there. Okay. And we also have some issues at, um, in our theater, and I think Sage is going to talk a little bit about that later. But that's kind of an overall picture of the project. Now, how does that fit with economic development? Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that we right now have a 45 mil tax levy for the school district, and that generates about $3.6 million. We spend about $18.6 million to do school in this community. And of that, about 12 million are, is within this district in this community because the majority of our staff, 88% of our staff, live here. And the biggest portion of our budget is payroll. So, um, you know, 88% of the staff being in this community and so that, that money comes into this community. Um, so that's one way that the schools are definitely a, a factor of economic development. Okay, let me stop you there because I want to dwell on that piece just okay. a little bit. Okay, you're you're bringing in 3.x million from local property taxes mm -hmm. out of USD 435 taxing districts. Correct. The rest of your 18x million dollar budget a year comes from outside the district funding sources. If you were a company, that's a pull factor. Okay, you're, you're, you're raising this amount of money from your local customers, but you're pulling the rest of the revenue from other people. That's significant for every town our size. Mm -hmm. Your pull factor is important to saying, how important am I to the world around me? Not only the world I'm in, but the world around me. Education in Kansas is funded through a formula that allows parity to exist over the, what we hope is the quality, quality of education. education statewide, mm -hmm. which means where the population is, Johnson County, Sedgwick County, those larger communities do funnel a lot of tax dollars out because from that population into the more rural areas through the current funding mechanism at the state, mm -hmm. right? That's correct. Okay. So the, with your ratio of local people who live here on your payroll and your vendors that you do business with locally, you're putting about $12 million back into this community out of that 18. That's Correct. Your estimated calculation. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you from the economic development standpoint, all local dollars are running between five and seven multiplier by the time they turn over. That's the current economic calculation on multiplier in our community. That's a big number. My point in asking you these questions is to allow the folks who are sitting behind the camera who do think about business, who may be interested in this, will be voting on it, to step back and look at this and say, we have a factory that's scattered around town. It's called USD 435, and they, we invest in that as, a, as owners of that facility, but we have product that comes out of it too. So I want to look at it that way. I think there's a group of people that will, that will, their information level will be enhanced by that, I guess is what I'm saying. The business community is very important and ICU mm -hmm. is just a really big business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have 335 employees that are on the payroll monthly. Um, and like I said, 88% of those live in this community. Um, you know, the other factor on economic development is we bring a lot of people to town. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we have large spaces to bring people, which we have football fields, we have gymnasiums, we have theaters, mm -hmm. you know, we bring people to town and those people spend money here. They go to our restaurants and I know I go to a lot of other towns, you know, I have kids in the system and, and we travel and go to ball games. and. Invariably, we swing by McDonald's or Burger King or, or whatever it might be on the way home from that community and grab something to eat or we'll fill up with gas or we'll stop in their grocery store if it's a day-long event and buy groceries. And so the district really does bring a lot of people to the community to help, you know, help with the economic development in, the, in that way as well. One of the things I personally want to do better uh, I work on the Abilene Area Chamber of <coughs> Commerce. I'm a local business guy. We're an employee-owned company, so I guess I'm a local business owner as well. The coordination between the entities in our community to enhance what we do when we bring people to town. First of all, we can bring more people to basketball games and wrestling matches if we plan to do so. 
we can also keep them here longer if we plan to do so and, and get them to spend some more incremental dollars. After the Eisenhower Presidential Library and Museum, probably the largest draw to town is the products here putting on exhibitions either on the stage or on the field or on the court. Mm -hmm. We just don't look at it that way often enough. And I'm, I'm, ha I'm taking this opportunity to ask you about that as well as have folks behind the camera think about it. Well, and one other opportunity that has arisen in the last couple of weeks is um, our State Department of Education has asked Abilene, since we're in a central located area, to offer space for a teacher's workshop this summer. It'll be two or three days and about 600 teachers. And so some of them will travel in through the day, but, but our hotels will probably be full. Mm -hmm. And uh, so any kind of, any, any opportunity like that that we, we have, we, we try to open up our doors and get people in because it's not only good for the stimulus of the economy, it's great for our educational system. We get free training for our teachers in those kinds of opportunities. So, um, so our teachers will be able to be involved and, uh, and then we'll have it here in this location. So, so we're looking at those kinds of things as well. These interviews always go too quickly. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to <clears throat> move to a couple of specific questions I wanted to ask I have on my little sheet here in front of All me. Right. Would be called a cheat sheet, but I don't have to call it that, <laughs> Sage. All right. So with Sage being the product, what's the value of a school's product uh, when you look at the putting them back into the economy and behind that what's the cost of waiting on facilities as it relates to looking at this as a business well the value is I mean we change lives every day I mean our teachers are changing lives daily working with kids and and trying to meet their needs and making sure they get what they want or what they need to progress in the future. Um, you know, if you look at some of the, the labor statistics, you would find that students that do not graduate from high school have a 14% chance, more of a chance to be unemployed. Uh, the lifetime earnings of a student without a high school diploma is about a third of what you can get when you have a high school diploma. So, you know, our product is pretty darn important for the economy all over the place and um, you know we, we work hard to try and and provide an opportunity for kids to have skills and and generate passion for different interests that they might have all the way through and we, we've offered off a lot more programs pre in the past too to, to try and generate that so when when I was working with you to set up this series of interviews about this very important issue. I reached out to a fellow I know at Wichita State, bright young guy, met him at a rural opportunities conference a couple of years ago. His name's Jeremy Hill. He's the director for economic um, development and business research there at the Frank Barton School of Business. Bright young guy. I sent him a note and I asked him those questions. And he sent me some research links and he said, it's really never been done in Kansas to study the problem of what is the impact of a high school education in Kansas versus not, a quality education versus one that's not. He said, but I did do something similar in Georgia and I'll be happy to send it to you. I have it here at the conclusions page. In Georgia, 17.6 billion a year, total direct losses of foregone income by what you just quoted. That number may or may not be analogous in a, in a size to Kansas because of population difference, but that's a huge number. It's a big number. I think <clears throat> common sense, numbers don't work well on TV, radio, but this does. Is there an impact in having a quality school versus non-quality school to society? Absolutely. Ab yeah. You agree? Yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to get to you in a minute. You get to close this thing. but. It has a number to it. If the answer is absolutely, then there is a number. Mm -hmm. Just because nobody has done the research in Kansas does not mean it's not there. The, the state funding formula in the Constitution, it says suitable. Well, suitable means a lot of things to a lot of people. But in Abilene right now, your citizens committee said suitable means that we need to invest in some facilities to make sure we continue to do what we need to do and do it well. Fairly said? Fairly said. Okay. So having said that, 
let's talk to the product a little bit. Sage, I've known you for a while. I met you uh, probably through Great Plains Theater and the, and the kids group there, right? Uh huh. Yeah, I work at the theater, do a lot of stuff there, but um, this school has definitely like, started my education and is what brought me where I am today. Okay, I'm going to ask you some specific questions. You're a senior. Mm -hmm. Where are you headed here in a couple of weeks to go talk to people? Oh, I'm not sure where I'm going to college yet, but I have some auditions um, starting next week. Auditions doing what and how important is that to your future? Uh, it's very important. Um, my auditions like determine whether or not I make it into the college. Tell us what the auditions for. People don't know you like I know you. We have four <laughs> minutes. Let's talk about SAGE and what USD 435 has done for you to prepare you for what you plan to do your entire life. Okay, well, um, I want to go into theater, and so my ultimate goal, well, first I'll go to college and just, like, travel a lot and do some shows and things, but ultimately um, I would like to, like, go back and get my master's and start an education program um, for kids like me. And so I think growing up in Abilene um, has just been awesome because it's small, but, I mean, the community is just so great and the schools have been wonderful, and so I've had a lot of, like, one-on-one -on -one with all the teachers and... Um, they just really like, taught me about leadership and everything that I need to move on with my future. And so I'd really like to go to school and bring some of that back to other children like me. I've said this to you personally, and I, I probably have said it on camera once maybe, but you communicate with me and ask Eagle Communications <laughs> to help the Great Plains players, your, your group that does a lot of great things. And I told you once, you know, you're better at asking and following up on than any other organization that contacts me and asks for money. Uh, that's to you as a person and the credit to your character, but it's also credit to your upbringing and your educational process. You couldn't do that if you hadn't been trained. Definitely, yeah. I mean, yeah, like I said, I mean, the schools here have just been wonderful, and I mean, without them, we wouldn't be where we are today. And so I really want, I don't know, I think we need some changes in the schools so that they can keep doing what they're doing. And like when we grow up, um, I mean, we want the students here now to come back to Abilene, and so we want our schools to keep maintained so that we can come back and bring our kids to school here and they can have the same education that we did. One more, one more leading question sort of a thing. Because you're in theater mu and you have been um, music theater here, uh, as you move forward in life, most people ask you to specialize, and I'm sure you're going to face some of that choice, whether I do music or whether I do theater and how you glue it back together. But I know one of the things that's in the, in the bond issue for facilities is really an auditorium. And I think it's an easy target, frankly. I think it's easy for people to say, okay, yeah, maybe we just don't need to do that. I asked Denise to provide somebody that could speak to that, and I think she made an incredibly good choice. Because I, I don't know anybody might understand how important it is to have a stage and have a facility that you can do this. and. Theater is something you do. It's not something you just study. It's something you do. And if you don't have a place and you can't draw a crowd, then you're not doing it. Yeah, the auditorium is such an important thing to the high school. I mean, there are so many more things that go on there than besides just shows. I mean, we have our school musical, which I've been a part of, which has just been an awesome experience. And then all of our band events and our concerts and choir concerts and all of that goes on in the auditorium. And our talent shows that we do through SPURS, the Student Peers Using Responsible Strategies group. There are just so many like groups and, um, that use that facility. And so it definitely needs some improvement because right now, I mean, when we go and do our band concerts, we are like crammed on the stage. And we have so many people in band this year. This is a record number. We have um, 80, uh, over 80 band members. And so we're just like crammed on the stage and there are students that are on the outside, like stuck in the curtains that like can't be seen by their parents and the percussion is like slammed up against the wall. And so the curtain, like the back curtain doesn't even hang down. And so, I mean, there are just so many great things that go on in there and the, the, the shows that we do are just restricted because of our space and, and our audience space too. The, the chair, I mean, people, it's not as comfortable as it could be, and we could just have a lot more things going on there and a lot more people coming into that space if it was a little renovated. I thank you both so much for showing up and sitting in front of the camera today. Uh, you've done a wonderful job of giving your perspective on this issue, and I thank you for that. I wish you best of luck in your endeavors, Dr. Guy, and Sage, same. 
Um, I enjoy the opportunity to speak to you both. Folks, we encourage you to get engaged. There's a lot of citizens in, on the Citizens Committee. There's a, there's a lot of uh, information on mm -hmm. Dr. Guy's website, which uh, is? Just go to abilenschools.org and click on Abilene Facilities. And it will be changing all the time, so. Please get engaged. We appreciate the opportunity to bring this issue to you. For Our Town, I'm Dennis Weiss.